What's going on, guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. Uh, I just, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all my new subscribers, all my subscribers, every one of you. I do this because I, I, I love photography. And if there's new people in street photography, maybe you can learn something. I've been doing it for a while, and I get this question a lot. Why am I a street photographer? Valid question. I mean, there's a lot of genres of photography, and uh, street photography is the one I chose, and there's definitely a reason behind it. And I suppose I will. I should go back to why am I a photographer at all. It definitely stems back to my childhood. Photography was always a big part of my family. My father was a hobbyist photographer. And like anything else that we do in my family, we it's never left at entry level. We we tend to dive dive into things. We had a dark room in my basement and it wasn't a black and white dark room. It was a color dark room, which is even more difficult. Unlike today, with technology, there is constantly a photo album being filled and looked at. And watching the whole process of the photo being taken all the way to a tangible print that you can hold and you know feel it and smell it and hear it when you rub your thumb against the edge of the paper. I think it was all those things that really spoke to me and pushed me to pick up a camera of my own and create. In my high school, they offered a photography course. They had photo one, photo two, and I, of course I took them both and it was awesome. They taught you everything from the tri exposure triangle to developing your film and making your own prints in a dark room right there in school. And I loved it, it was amazing. And also in college, I uh, the college I went to offered photography one and photography two. And it was basically a refresher course. It was the same type of thing. They taught you the basics of photography, and you developed your own film and, and made your own prints. And, of course, I took both of those. It was fun. I was a horrible photographer. And all the way through high school, through college, and into my adulthood, I used the, the same camera, an old Rico film camera. I can't, I can't even tell you the, the model. Uh, I had no idea. I can't even tell you what lens it was. I, I loved photography. I loved looking at photos. I loved taking photos. But I really wasn't in the gear. Gear wasn't really a thing um, like it is today. It wasn't as accessible. So with the internet, we can just go into web pages and look at gear. We can watch videos of people messing with all this gear. We didn't. Even, we had a camera store that I never even really went to much. I, I had what I had. I had my mom's camera, whatever lenses she used, in a bag, and that was it. I bought film. I put it in there. I took pictures. I didn't care what the next great thing was. I didn't care what was coming out. I had no idea. I just this was. It was amazing. It. <laughs> It was amazing not constantly evaluating what you have, what they have, what you should do, what you should get. It's so freeing. Anyway, I digress. I would show you some of these old photos from back then, but I don't have them anymore. They weren't worth keeping, and they're definitely not worth showing. Let's fast forward to 2010. This is the year I bought my very first digital camera. So from 1985, until 2010, I used the same Ricoh film camera. Digital has been out a while, but I couldn't afford to get one. I got a Nikon D3100 with the kit lens. I could, I could finally take all the photos I want. See, film is expensive. It's even more expensive now. I didn't have a lot of money. I couldn't afford film. I couldn't, and if I did form a, a for, if I did buy a roll of film, I couldn't. I took the photos, but I couldn't develop it. It was tight. It was just crappy. Anyway, now I can finally take as many photos as I wanted to, and it didn't cost me a penny. You know, after you buy all the stuff, I shot the crap out of that camera. Mostly in the backyard. And, uh, 
everywhere I went, I just took my camera and, and took pictures of my family and peach trees and <laughs> whatever. And I just practiced. And then I saved that money and I bought a uh, some good glass. I got a Nikon 24 to 70 28 and a Nikon 70 to 200 28. Then I started a photo business. And I was doing family photos and weddings. And eventually, after my now ex-wife started a... Um, she started breeding dogs, Connie Corsos. And so I started taking photos of those dogs. And then it led to taking photos of other people's dogs. And I ended up starting a pet photography business. And I was taking dogs and cats. And I was doing dog shows. and Which led to doing graphic art. Um, putting together breeding announcements and photos for magazines for dog magazines and um, really cool composites uh, we take photos of the dogs and I put together these composites which was kind of like advertisements for these breeding co companies and fast forward 10 years of doing pet photography I found myself divorced and living in my buddy's spare bedroom. My pet photography business came to a screeching halt. It just stopped. Then I found myself sitting in my room watching a documentary, I think it was on Netflix, of a photographer by the name of Eddie Adams. He's a war photographer. Documentary. War photographer. And that's when it hit me. All these years I've been doing the wrong photography. Nothing that I have been doing with my camera did anything for me emotionally. It didn't tell a story. It didn't evoke any emotions. It was just a job. So I started studying war photographers, documentary photographers, National Geographic photographers, and other photojournalism photographers. I realized that I'm 43 years old, and if I wanted to be a photojournalist, I needed to start 20 years ago. I was too old to cover wars, and I didn't want to start from the ground floor at some newspaper taking pictures of the grand opening of an ice cream shop for some paper that nobody read. Newspapers were dead, and I missed my opportunity. Then I discovered street photography, and I instantly fell in love. It was like photojournalism and documentary all rolled into this subgenre of photography that was so powerful. And best of all, accessible. I can do it whenever, wherever. The ability to document an ever-changing society, evoke emotion, record history, and dance with an evolving landscape of light, shadow, reflection, and an array of compositions that change minute to minute, town to town, city to city, it's exciting, and it matters. In 2017, I bought a 35 millimeter, which was a 50 millimeter equivalent on the crop sensor lens for my Nikon, and I hit the streets. I went straight to Columbus, Ohio, and I started my street photography career. A career that may never make a dime, and I didn't care. Then I was looking for a project. I wanted to scale down. And I turned my attention to the village of Granville. I wanted to document life in this small college town. This is about the time where I decided if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right. So I bought a Fujifilm X100F. And for the next two years, I walked the streets of Granville. Not only to hone my skills as in street photography, but hopefully create a body of work that in 20 years, that at least the people in this town would bring up memories and emotions that only a photograph can do. And this is why I'm a street photographer. And I'm just getting started.